Hello everybody, I'm Bill Rabinowitz along with Joey Kaufman. We're here at Ohio Stadium after Ohio State's 35-7 win over Iowa. Uh, shaky first half, Ohio State only led 7-0 at halftime. Uh, the offense missed out on a bunch of opportunities to, to expand their lead after they scored on their opening drive. But the defense was, was great all game and Ohio State pulled away in the third quarter. Normally Iowa would not seem like the litmus test for a defense because in previous years when Brian Ferentz was the offensive coordinator, one of the worst offenses in all of the, the football bowl subdivision. They are a little better this year. Tim Lester's now uh, calling that side of the ball for Kirk Ferentz. And they also have a really good running back, Caleb Johnson. And coming into this game, he was second nationally in uh, rushing. So how would Ohio State's defense do against, against a back? It was really tough, forces yards after contact. And they did a good job. I mean, he had 86 rushing yards, but one of them was a 20-yard gain, another was a 20-yard gain. The rest of them were, were 30 yards. So they did a really good job of holding things at the line of scrimmage. And the linebackers also were, were better this week, really. It did a really nice job of fitting their responsibilities. Yeah, the, the job that Ohio State's defense on Caleb Johnson was terrific. They swarmed to the ball. He really had nowhere to go. And, and they wanted to put the game in Cade McNamara's arms. And Ohio State fans remember Cade McNamara. He was the quarterback for, Ohio, or for Michigan in 2021 when the Wolverines broke that Ohio State's long dominance over Ohio State. Um, he wanted to recreate that magic. And he started at the beginning. He started strong. He completed, I think, 10 of his first 11 passes. Uh, and then, then Ohio State's superior talent took over. Uh, I, uh, Iowa, the other thing to put out is Kirk Ferentz helped Ohio State a lot because there was a fourth and one at midfield and he elected to first bring out the punt team, which everyone's going, what are you doing? And then they faked it, made it, but Iowa had called timeout. And then they punt and shank it. So that was one. And the other was earlier, they went for a 51-yard field goal on fourth and two, I think, fourth and one or fourth and two, and missed the field goal. So thank you, Kirk Ferentz, if you're an Ohio State fan. Yeah, that, that was certainly a choice that he made. <laughs> it was, it was they choice. also attempted a, a field goal on another fourth and short, and instead of going for it, and they, they missed it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, they, yeah. They, yeah. yeah. So now, would that have changed the game? You know, probably not, but it wouldn't have been a shutout well into the fourth quarter or possibly wouldn't have been a shutout. I mean, I think the analytics people will tell you that's, those situations, it's pretty much a no-brainer to go for it. Then again, that's Iowa's offense. So <laughs> maybe. They, they are trying to play the field position game. They are trying to, uh, to pin you deep, force a stop in your own end zone to give themselves better field position. It is, it is just that's, that is yeah. their style. Uh, second half, Ohio State's offense, they got the, the kickoff to start the second half, went down the field, scored. Jeremiah Smith caught a 53-yard pass, uh, set it up, and then a four-yarder where he just reached up with one hand, fended off the Iowa defender who was just grabbing his left arm. You know, that was 14-0. Then Jack Sawyer forces a fumble. Ohio State scores right after that, and that was pretty much ball game. They did a good job, I thought, of the second half. They did in the first half as well. Their opening possession was really well scripted by – by Chip Kelly, and they had a good start to the second half as well, where they were going run, 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 and, and then hit, hit Jeremiah on, on that deep ball, So the, and that set them up for the red zone, yeah. and they eventually score. So they were really effective of, of set, using the run to set the pass this game, especially. I thought the really the star unit of the game was probably Ohio State's offensive line. I mean, certainly the defensive line. I mean, uh, Ty Hamilton forced a fumble. Uh, Tyler Williams had a big play. Um, I mean, the defensive line controlled the play, but the big question coming into the season was Ohio State's offensive line. And I think you could say through five games, they pretty much answered that question. Iowa's a really good defense, and Ohio State was able to run the ball, especially just between the tackles, the, the north-south runs, not so much the perimeter runs, but the north-south runs. They they open holes for those running backs. And, and then you have running backs like Quinchon Judkins and Travion Henderson and both of them are running really, really well right now. They're running really hard, yep. too, and they're, they're not just running north and south, but when they're going through those holes, they're hitting them fast, they're being deliberate, and that was from the opening drive, I thought. They, they showed a willingness to, to do that, and that opened, that opened things up. But you think about this offensive line, they added Seth McLaughlin, but everybody else who were returning starters, this was the same Except offensive line. Except for Right, but this was the same, these guys were all here a year ago, and 
they are really, I think, much improved at that front just so far in the year. This was going to be the, the t uh, true test for, for the offensive yeah. line. I mean, the last two weeks have been pretty good tests because Michigan State had a good front. Iowa had an even better front. And by some metrics, this was the best defense in the country. And they they handled them at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they did. And then if it's even a stalemate against Iowa in, in the trenches, Ohio State's skill position players are just so much better than Iowa's. And that could a three touchdown catches today. Uh, and none of them are easy ones. They made nice catches on all of them. Uh, Will Howard showed he used his feet, showed that he can use his feet as well. He had a touchdown run. Um, you know, so a lot of things went wrong for Ohio State's offense in the first half, and they still won 35 7. Yeah, I think, I mean, they left some points on the board in the first half. When you think about the, yeah. the Jeremiah Smith fumble, Will Howard's interception, which I thought was a, was a great opportunity for Ohio State when they when they pinned Iowa back deep yep. late in the, the second quarter and then got a stop, got a three and out. They were they, they a steal possession. It looked like maybe they were going to have a two-minute drill and at least get a field goal, and then it didn't, didn't work out that way. So 35-7, I think Ohio State feels good about itself going to the showdown next week in, at Oregon. Um, we'll talk a lot more about that in the, week, in, in the following week. Thanks for watching.